Thank you for checking out Lakehead International's videos. You're about to watch one of our Lakehead International live webinars, a fun and informative way to learn more about Lakehead while also meeting faculty, staff, and current students. If you have any questions throughout today's video, please comment below. Otherwise, let's get started. And with that, I want to officially welcome you to Lakehead University and thank you again for joining us. Um, sharing a bit more and, and helping reveal where Lakehead University is and who we are, I'm proud to share, of course, that we're located in Canada. We're a public university within the province of Ontario. More specifically, though, we have two hometowns and campuses. One is located in Aurelia, which is in central Ontario, and the other campus is located in Thunder Bay or northwestern Ontario. Um, you may be wondering who is Lakehead and, and why, do I, why, why do I care about Lakehead? Um, we're, of course, extremely proud and we pride ourselves in being a smaller or medium-sized institution here in Canada, but that doesn't mean that we don't have strong rankings and recognitions around the global university community. So, uh, uh, for example, in Canada, we are the number one not-for-profit research income institution in our category. And then in terms of the Times Higher Education Global Impact Rankings, we're actually the number one university in North America with under 9,000 students. Here in Canada, and, and comparing us to other fellow Canadian institutions, we've consistently been ranked in Canada's top 10 universities in our category. Um, and that just is a few of our rankings. You can certainly learn more on our website. Uh, speaking a bit more about the Lakehead experience, something else that we pride ourselves in is our undergraduate entering scholarships. Last year alone, we gave out over $7.8 million in international entrance scholarships to our international undergrad students. Um, and we do have one of Canada's most generous entrance scholarship programs, which you can also learn more about on our website. When you arrive on campus, you'll notice being a smaller institution, um, we also offer really small classroom environments, which uh, allow for you to make deeper connections with peers and hopefully uh, more meaningful relationships with your professors, which I'll dive into a bit further, especially chatting with our faculty joining us today. On the Thunder Bay campus, we have a 15 to 1 uh, student to professor ratio and on our Aurelia campus we have a 13 to 1 student professor ratio. What all that uh, equates to really is the fact that when you graduate with your Lakehead degree uh, you're you're really well suited to find solid career prospects. So over 96.3 percent of our grads are employed within two years after they walk across that stage. In comparison Ontario University's uh, average right now is 94.3. So we're 2% higher than uh, the comparator across the board here for Ontario University graduates. Chatting a bit more about Lakehead and diving into now the academics, why you're here today, um, I'm sh happy to share more about our areas of study or our faculties. So we deliver programming within business administration, engineering, science and environmental studies, natural resources management, education, social sciences and humanities, health and behavioral sciences, law, and graduate studies. Of course, so today we're really excited to be joined by our social sciences and humanities crew. Um, and with that being said, I would like to pass over to uh, Dr. Donotter to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Alice Donotter. I'm actually an English professor and most of the courses that I teach are English courses, English literature, particularly in the 18th and 19th centuries. However, I am also the coordinator of the Media, Film, and Communications program, and I'm the coordinator for interdisciplinary studies. So sometimes I teach interdisciplinary studies inquiry courses. Uh, sometimes I teach visual media for the Media, Film, and Communications program. I've been at Lakehead for a long time. Um, I'm always happy to talk to students, um, either in person or on Zoom, and I'd love to chat with you. Awesome. Well, thank you again for joining us. Next, I'll pass over to Dr. Mayawana. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Benjamin Meangwa, and I'm assistant uh, professor in the Department of Political Science at Lakehead. Um, I joined uh, Lakehead quite recently uh, in the fall of uh, 2021. And uh, since then, I have been uh, teaching courses ranging from uh, global terrorism, um, uh, global political uh, economy, uh, international peace building, uh, fostering political voice, as well as the intro to policy um, politics. And uh, another thing that I do is to work closely with students, um, in particularly uh, with the um, political science uh, student club. 
uh, as well as the political science and the pre-law uh, club as well. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. And last but not least, I'll, I'll introduce Dr. Poppin. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, my name is Lee Poppin and I'm the director of Outdoor Recreation, Parks and Tourism. I'm also an assistant professor, so I'm a faculty member. I primarily teach uh, research methods as well. I have a strong research interest in equity, social justice, diversity, inclusion, and I'm looking at research topics related to the way we can make the outdoors and land-based learning more inclusive. Uh, another way that students and I often interact is that we provide uh, our own academic advising within our school because we have a unique degree program. And students often come to see me if they're thinking about sort of their next steps, career goals, um, and how they can mobilize what they've learned with us into their lives outside of this institution. So really look forward to, to chatting with you like Alice. I'm really happy to talk on Zoom or in person, um, and uh, my uh, door, as it were, is always open. Awesome. Well, thank you to the entire panel for joining me today and and sharing your uh, stories and sharing more details about the programs that you represent. Of course, so we are here to chat about the broader faculty also of social science and humanities. So I'll kick things off with a quick introduction. Um, essentially, what we're looking for is that we are looking for the next generation of global citizens in one of our engaging social sciences and humanities programs. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to thrive within our dynamic and vibrant learning environments with small classes, high impact practices, and award-winning faculty uh, who likely will know you by your first name and engage in your success. You'll also have the opportunity to explore the diversity of human experience across time and place and investigate the, the ways in which uh, meaning is made, how our world views are represented, and how new ideas uh, take hold and shape us and our world around us. In Social Sciences and Humanities, we explore the large and enduring questions related to the ways in which human beings think and behave, how they interact with each other, and their environments, of course, we also look at how they communicate ideas about human experience through a rich range of research topics. Um, speaking about research, we are very proud to be recognized within the top 10 primarily undergraduate universities in Canada for social sciences and humanities research. Um, it, it's really something that we integrate into almost all of our programming, including at the undergraduate level. So it's not just reserved for students that are pursuing a master's program or even a doctoral program. Uh, this is something that we've built in from the foundation of our core programming, which is undergraduate degrees. And of course, we always hope that our graduates are ready to make a difference in, in our communities and, and hopefully their communities back home one day. A unique advantage to choosing social sciences and humanities or one of the programs at the undergraduate level specifically is that many of our programs have the option to pursue two majors uh, at the same time. So those are typically two topics that or disciplines that are closely related. Um, and then having that double major or combined honors program permits a more thorough interdisciplinary uh, exploration of appropriate themes. So you may be asking, why is it important to study more than one major in a humanities course? Um, and I think it really speaks to uh, looking around the world today and seeing how uh, it's no longer that one size fits all in terms of one degree is going to guarantee you a job. It's important to have a, a wealth of understanding of how different themes and topics intersect with each other. And like I said before, having that interdisciplinary approach in your education uh, will hopefully uh, help you excel when you're ready for a career or perhaps further studies. Chatting about undergraduate programs, um, I, I did my undergrad here at Lakehead, although not in social sciences and humanities, um, this is one of my favorite things to share more about because these are students that are coming typically out of high school or perhaps maybe even a, sec a second degree, second bachelor's degree. Um, but this is the foundation of your future. So where, where are you going to take this degree? Is it going to be further studies? Is it going to be the workforce? However, uh, you envision that you'll have the opportunity to also craft a degree uh, that that, of course, is prescribed in terms of what is required to graduate, but also where are the electives where you're going to be able to pursue your passions. 
So we offer programs within criminology, English, gender and women's studies, arts, history, indigenous learning, interdisciplinary studies, languages, media, film and communication, music, um, our outdoor recreation, parks and tourism, which we'll chat a bit more about in depth, uh, philosophy, political science, sociology and visual arts. You may already see this list or hear this list. Um, and think, wow, that that program or, or that degree sounds like it might be the right fit for me. But there also may be other programs or, or names that ring a bell or, or maybe spark an interest. And, and the message I want you to hear today is that when you pursue a social sciences and humanities degree, you're going to be able to, like I said, craft your education and, and build it how you want. So there's going to be prescribed courses. But being able to pursue other courses outside of your discipline uh, will help you maybe uh, make more of a unique experience here at Lakehead. We also like to chat about outdoor recreation, parks and tourism as one of a kind in Canada. I think that lends really well to our location here in Thunder Bay, uh, where recreation and access to recreation is truly unparalleled. Um, having our campus have access to recreational experiences right here on campus but also within our, our very near community. Um, there's so many experiences that we'll be able to chat more about, and I'm sure uh, Lee will, will dive into at great lengths. If you are perhaps also considering taking your undergrad degree at Lakehead and furthering your education, or perhaps you've already completed an undergrad degree in your home country and you want to pursue a graduate program, we also offer select master programs here. So we have English and cultural studies, we have history, social justice studies, and sociology. All four of these options are also available in course-based options, and so that means that Maybe you're not necessarily research driven or, or you don't have the same passions for conducting your own research, but you still want to earn a master's and you still want to pursue a degree. Uh, it, it will be integrated in there nonetheless, uh, but there are flexible options in terms of the route that you choose to pursue that master's level course. Um, we also have a gender and women's studies specialization available at the master's level. Um, so that's a quick overview of the, the faculty itself and the programs that we offer. Uh, but today, of course, we wanna really highlight our panel of guests that joined us. And so I have the distinct pleasure in welcoming and, and introducing uh, Outdoor Recreation, Parks and Tourism. Thanks, Jordan. <clears throat> yeah, I'm really thrilled to be able to talk to you all today about uh, outdoor recreation parks and tourism at Lakehead, which is unique in Canada. It's the old, the longest running outdoor recreation program, I believe in North America at this point. We've been around for about 45 years. So we have been doing this a while <laughs> and, uh, and, we, and we are folks who are driven by creativity, dynamic thinking, problem solving, and really have a passion and curiosity for the world around us. Um, we really view the land as a teacher and we engage in all kinds of experiential learning opportunities, both in our classrooms and outside. So you can see some students here doing some climbing in the winter time. Uh, if there is a type of thing that you can do outside, we try to do it and we try to do it safely. And one of the things, you know, people think about the activities that we do outside, and really that is an opportunity for us uh, to learn from the land, to learn from each other, and to learn how to work well with one another. And one of the really unique things as well about outdoor parks and tourism is not only can you do double majors, but you can do double degrees. So we offer an honors bachelor of outdoor recreation, and it's a four-year degree, but you can combine that with a bachelor of arts, a bachelor of science, and or a Bachelor of Education. So um, for the first two within in four years, you can graduate with two degrees. And if you're adding on the Bachelor of Education, um, that's a six, six year pathway to two degrees. So uh, we have a lot of opportunities for you to sort of shine and, and show your strengths and work with other like-minded, creative, dynamic, problem-solving people. And we really take an approach of creating a community, supporting our students, and see the growth of the outdoor recreation parks and tourism industry globally as a really wonderful opportunity to establish relationships across across the world. And um, 
yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say about us right now. <laughs> awesome. I also wanted to jump in and I know I had a few speaking notes for this slide, but I think you covered it really well. Um, some of the things that I wanted to highlight, though, were, of course, as you mentioned, you support a broad scope of activities that are both local and international scales. Um, and that that heavily also involves um, Indigenous and, and multicultural perspectives. So having an international student join this will, will certainly benefit the broader programming. And then for your peers, you will always bring a unique lens to the classroom environment which I think that our professors are, are highly adept and, and trained to also lean into that and, and look for opportunities where there could be a deeper learning opportunity there and seeing how, how students from diverse backgrounds will have different perspectives. Um, another thing, and, and I know I already mentioned this, uh, is the fact, of course, the perfect natural environment and surrounding area to explore this subject matter. Um, it's exciting to hear that we have such a strong history and rich history that's foundational to Lakehead itself as an institution. Um, running for so long, like you said, uh, this is nothing new to us, but we've also continued to evolve. So we have the deep understanding of what is foundational to outdoor recreation. And we also have the unique opportunity to continue to evolve as times change and as the, the demand for different uh, perspectives change as well. So I think that's what I wanted to add and share. I think you also did a great job and covered it beautifully. Did you have anything else to maybe add on there or did I spark any new trains of thoughts? You did. I'm, so I'm just going to add, it's always dangerous to ask professors to talk about their programs because we can go on for a really long time. But uh, I did want to say that we really have designed our first year, uh, the first year required courses in outdoor recreation to give that exposure uh, to the land and the place that where we are situated here. And so outdoor recreation, parks and tourism is only offered at the Lakehead Thunder Bay campus on the traditional territory of Fort William First Nation. And in, in the first year courses, you have an opportunity to go out and to learn in our local environment around Thunder Bay and also in the region. So for folks who aren't from this place, from this area, you get to really know it a lot better uh, and get to see the surrounding areas and the natural environments, waterways, hikes, and all kinds of things to really appreciate all of those components of, of life in Thunder Bay. And as Jordan really, you know, put it well, we, we are in a perfect location um, it, to do this kind of work and to, to have easier access uh, to all these rich learning opportunities. I think I'm good now. I feel like I've said my said my piece, Jordan. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you again for sharing more. Well, we have not heard all of it from you, though. I know we're going to come back to some other unique learning opportunities, but next I'll have the pleasure of passing over to uh, political science. Thank you, Jordan. Um, first off, uh, we are all political uh, actors uh, belonging to uh, various political communities. Um, and that is what we emphasize here in the Department of Political Science, how politics uh, shapes our lives in so many ways. Uh, our communities, to begin with, uh, have been formed through politics. And uh, politics also guides uh, our many actions, uh, both in the present, but also it gives us an idea of uh, where our communities are also headed. Uh, we think about politics in terms of uh, individuals uh, as members of our uh, regions, our cities, uh, our nations, uh, as well as, you know, the global uh, community as a whole. Uh, so we engage uh, in the political science uh, departments uh, with these realities uh, by studying uh, political institutions. Uh, we study international norms, we study uh, ideas. Uh, we study political practices across the world uh, that shape um, local, national, uh, and international uh, politics. Uh, we ask central questions uh, about our lives, about our engagements uh, with our governments. Uh, we ask questions about uh, right and wrong, about good, uh, about justice, uh, about the limits we should place on the actions uh, of government. Uh, we also try to redress uh, historical wrongs. We ask uh, questions about colonization, imperialism, uh, questions about uh, the systems that uh, 
we are in today in so many uh, political communities, the capitalist system, uh, socialist system, communist system, and so on. We also study uh, ideologies, and uh, we consider ourselves in this department uh, as a community uh, where we work directly uh, with students in, in, in studying these ideas uh, to help students, not just at that intellectual level, but you know, to enjoy the overall uh, journey and experience uh, being in a university, uh, a kind of a you know, close-knit university uh, as Lakehead. So together with students and faculty, uh, we study different fields of uh, political science, uh, Canadian uh, politics, uh, international uh, relations, uh, political theory, uh, indigenous politics, uh, comparative uh, politics, uh, public uh, administration, uh, as well as uh, policy. Uh, we placed a lot of our graduating students uh, in top law schools. And uh, one of the most uh, important uh, elements of our program is the uh, uh, pre-law political science uh, program. So uh, this program uh, trains students uh, and prepares them uh, for uh, studies in, in different law schools, but as well as graduate uh, programs uh, in Canada and uh, around the world. So a lot of our students have gone on to uh, the Lakehead uh, Law School, uh, as well as law schools uh, at York University, uh, University of Ottawa's Faculty of Law, uh, the Robson uh, Hall uh, Law School at the University of Manitoba, Queen's University, and uh, Western University's uh, Faculty of Law. Uh, our majors have also gone on. There are a variety of uh, opportunities after studies at the political science uh, department here. Uh, most of our majors have gone on uh, to become lawyers, uh, diplomats, business leaders, uh, civil servants, uh, lobbyists, uh, politicians, uh, political analysts, uh, journalists, teachers. The list is endless. Uh, Lake, Lake Health Political Science Program um, also offers, you know, a BA program in political science, but also a Bachelor of Arts uh, honors uh, in political science. And not to forget also uh, that we offer joint uh, degrees in history, uh, in economics, as well as in philosophy. Uh, another very uh, important aspect of what we do here um, is the student uh, um, uh, clubs that we have. We have the Lakehead Political Science Student Association. Uh, we also have uh, the Lakehead Pre-Law Student Association. And these groups, in a way, they bring students together outside of the classroom to continue so many of the conversations that we do not have time to, to explore at length uh, in the classroom. And uh, one of our pedagogies here is that we, we teach through debates uh, as well as dialogue uh, with students. So these clubs actually help to foster uh, that. So I think that is uh, all I can say for now. And we look forward to welcoming you uh, to our department. Thank you. Thank you for sharing more. And I'm, I'm really happy that you were able to uh, to touch on those clubs because I also want to recognize that it brings together students uh, who have like-minded interests and, and really builds that community that, of course, we always try and foster in the classroom. But when you have like-minded individuals that are perhaps in the pre-law club that are all considering their applications to law school, they're going through that the intense process, to say the least, I think they'll be there to support each other outside of, of course, the supports and services that Lakehead themselves offers. So thank you again for sharing more about political science. Uh, next, we're, we're going to move on and chat a bit about interdisciplinary studies uh, here at Lakehead, and we'll kick things off with me media, film, and communication, uh, communications, pardon me, and then we'll also chat a bit about criminology. So I'll pass it over to Dr. Donater. Thanks, Jordan. So media, film, and communications um, is one of the interdisciplinary studies programs that we offer at the Aurelia campus. Um, if you're on the Thunder Bay campus, there are some media, film, and communications courses you can take, the ones that are offered online, but mostly this is a program to take in Aurelia. The program offers both um, analysis and production. 
So on the one hand, you can study and, and analyze print and visual media, including representations of all kinds of things like race, class, gender, et cetera, um, with an effort to really increase inclusion and, and positive social change. But on the other hand, you can actually in, make things yourself. You can explore hands-on experiential courses in production. And those courses could be just simply at the first year level, um, a general course introduction to um, production of media, film, and, com and uh, communications, or it could be um, digital imaging. It could be at the second year level courses in video production or intermedia production, um, or even graphic design for that matter. Third year level, we have web design courses, cinematography courses, um, and advanced media courses. And then by fourth year, um, the range of production courses can really vary in any given year from things like documentary film production um, to this year we're doing um, blogs and, and professional podcasts. Um, they're, they're, those courses continually change, um, but really they fine tune your expertise in an area of social media um, production. And the, the uniqueness of this program really comes from those small classes. So when you are working on a film, you'll be working with other students. Um, one might be the director, one might be the producer, one might be an actor, one might be the person handling the film, and another one really working on the editing. So it, these are team efforts. So there's a lot of, of team building. Um, you, you really get to know your cohort well. Um, and you fine tune those skills of, of media production um, as you go along. As well, we've got um, internships, we've got fourth year creative projects and an annual media art showcase. And I just wanna say a few more things about the, the small class sizes. Um, in first years, the analysis classes might have, you know, 40 to 50 students, but the production courses will only have 20. So you're going to get that very close attention from your instructors um, who will help you fine tune the skills that you want to work on. Our instructors are very approachable. Um, they're, for the most part, world renowned um, media analysts such as Dr. Sandra Jeppesen. Um, but also film and media producers, uh, such as Cliff Keynes or, or Sean Reese. And building on those production courses, the internship program allows you to put those skills into action in the workplace, in a workplace, an actual real life workplace environment. Um, we currently have those located either in Barrie or Aurelia. Um, and they can include places like Rogers Television, uh, Laura Joy Photography, you know, those are actually media industries, um, as well as in the nonprofit cultural sector. So we have several placements at, for example, um, the Aurelia Museum of Art and History or the Aurelia Opera House, Information Aurelia, um, even the Simcoe County's uh, Rover Football Club, um, has one of our, our interns working with them. And the lovely thing about those internships is that each one gives you a course credit toward your program. You're allowed a, a maximum of two of those um, and usually do that in third or fourth year, but it is a fantastic opportunity to get some experience on your resume. Um, and it allows you to see how the skills you're learning in the classroom translate into a working environment. And I think I'll say more about um, the Media Art Showcase later. So I'll, I'll leave that one for now. But it, this, this program really lets you use both your thinking capacity and your making capacity. So it's, it's very exciting. Awesome. I'll jump in here. And I just want to mention in my own travels to Aurelia, I'm based on the Thunder Bay campus, but I've had the opportunity to sit down with several media, film and communications students and, and even got to chat with a Vietnamese student who did an internship at Information Aurelia and hearing her 
uh, experience and hearing her thoughts around applying that foundational knowledge that you've gained so that an analytical knowledge, but also the the direct hands-on experience of some of those courses and then working in a, a work environment, a formal job essentially, and being able to apply that and, and hone her skills and her passions, which now, if I'm not mistaken, she's in her fourth and final year with Lakehead. I'll hope to get to see her uh, later this fall semester. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to see where she's able to take that experience. Um, with that being said, I'll, I'll pass back to Dr. Donato to share more about our criminology program as well. Okay, and, and again, our criminology program is an interdisciplinary studies program within the Department of Interdisciplinary Studies. Um, and for those of you who might be wondering what criminology is, it, it involves the study of crime, um, including victimization, uh, criminality, and criminal justice agents and institutions, among other areas. So that field is very multidisciplinary, um, includes aspects that align with sociology, some with psychology, some with political science, and various other academic fields. And so at Lakehead, um, when you want to major in criminology, um, one of the things that we've really tried to work on is to increase the practitioner orientation. So you would, you would be learning about the Canadian um, criminal justice system, but there are also courses we have that are about comparative criminology. So you might find ways that can intersect with international um, criminal ways of, of, I mean, not criminal, um, criminal studies um, and, and ways to, to stop crime and to um, increase the safety of, of communities. So um, the, there are three real strong thematic areas of focus um, in, in the program. Um, one is social justice and human rights. And again, this extends beyond just the Canadian setting. Um, we have some instructors who have taught in other countries who actually are very familiar with the, the criminal justice system elsewhere and who are continually bringing their knowledge and expertise uh, into the classroom. Um, we also have an angle that focuses more on law and legal institutions. So there are courses in criminal law, for example. Um, there's a course in uh, prosecution and sanctioning. Um, there are courses on the, the whole um, incarceration system. And then the third angle, which is actually a very unusual one um, for most criminology programs, um, we also include forensic science and criminalistics. So that's a bit more the science side of things. And remember that with any interdisciplinary studies program, and this actually pertains to media, film, and communications as well, all of these programs are general, are, are um, not general, they're honors programs in arts and science. And so there are scientific aspects here. Um, for media, film, and communications, those science aspects are, are more about technology. But here, we really are looking at criminalistics and the, and the ways to examine, for instance, a crime scene. Um, again, our class sizes are relatively small. Um, they are larger than, than the media, film, and communications courses, for sure. Um, and at the first year level, you may note that, you know, might might get to be about 80 students in your class. However, by fourth year, the class sizes are pretty close. We try to keep them as close to 20 or under as possible, just to enable you to have that personal experience where your voice matters and where you can start developing um, thoughts and dialogues with other students. So it's a very close interactive student experience. Um, you get to acquaint yourself with, with the professors quite easily. And I should note this as well for any of the interdisciplinary studies programs, you can become involved with your professor's research projects. And that can also be a really wonderful opportunity for you. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. 
Awesome. Well, well, thank you so much for sharing that. I'm glad that you touched on at the end the, the research because I have also similarly heard of the stories where students are able to engage professors in their research, whether it's becoming an assistant to them, perhaps during the summer month or the summer break, uh, or even it's part-time during the school year. Um, the really enriched experiences where students can start to build that that research knowledge and understanding, especially if they're considering further education. I also want to sort of set the perspective or set the stage to those small classroom environments. Um, it's funny that when we say that first year classes might have 80 students in them, us at Lakehead might look at that and go, that's a big class. But in, in setting that stage, when you look at other Ontario institutions, that's a small class. That's a tiny class even. Um, and that's our first year courses. So again, reiterating where as you get into your senior level courses, years three and four, and in some instances, right from the beginning of your Lakehead degree, you will be in small classroom environments where, uh, I mean, in some cases, you will certainly have to perhaps put your head in the book a bit harder to make sure you're you're showing up to class prepared. Um, but also more importantly, you're you're building stronger connections with your peers, your your classmates, and, and more importantly, your professors. So if there are any instances where you're struggling in, in terms of the, the topic at hand, you may be more comfortable to go up to somebody else for that help that you may require. So thank you again for sharing more about that. Um, shifting gears somewhat, but and really staying topical to things that we've already discussed as experiential and unique learning opportunities. So I will pass it over to Lee to share more about uh, one of the sailing expeditions that students have partaken uh, in the past. Thanks, Jordan. Yeah, so in our program, we have a, a course that happens at the end of third year or the start of fourth year where you have the opportunity to go on a expedition, either sailing um, or canoeing or kayaking, uh, sometimes more land-based opportunities as well. And what's really unique about this opportunity and the sailing opportunity in particular um, is that the students that went on this expedition planned the expedition. So this isn't an expedition that we plan as staff and then students go on it. Uh, part of doing this expedition is doing all of the planning work in advance of it. So planning the route, making sure it's safe, planning the meals, accounting for any um, you know safety considerations and, and ensuring that everyone sort of has their role and knows what they're going to be doing on the expedition, has the appropriate training, um, so getting that important sailing certification in advance, the introductory one. Um, this also constitutes a really important um, community partnership for us here in Thunder Bay. So we offer a sailing expedition every year and we work closely with a local business uh, sales superior who now employ two of our graduates um, uh, because of the opportunities that they've had with sales superior. So um, this, this expedition in particular um, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not a sailing person, so I'm watching this and I'm thinking about the gravel that I would be taking. <laughs> um, but these students had a really phenomenal opportunity to um, experience Lake Superior. Uh, they did a whole bunch of research for the now established Lake Superior National Marine Conservation Area. Uh, they also did some work for tourism, Thunder Bay. And they were able to monitor invasive species, do some shoreline cleanup, um, and provide uh, promotional materials for both the company that we were working with as well as the city of Thunder Bay. And uh, I think this really emphasizes for us the fact that this is a very holistic experiential learning opportunity, similar to what Alice was talking about with interdisciplinary studies. Uh, we want you to be a part of this at every stage. And we really view ourselves as faculty and instructors uh, we have a robust technologist team who support field learning as well. And, and we really view ourselves as facilitators of your learning and, and want to help you to realize your goals and dreams and the things that you want to do. And so um, these sailing opportunities are just totally tremendous and exciting ways to experience the largest freshwater lake in the world that we are fortunate to, to live on. So um yeah, I think that's that about covers that one, Jordan, but it's certainly a real capstone opportunity for students. Awesome. Thank you. I, I think I would be in a similar boat as you or maybe not the boat because I would also be on that gravel train. Um, 
I, I know that, like you said, conducting that research, uh, when we actually chatted with one of the professors that helped guide this experience or, or was a part of it, he also shared that they were able to do some of the uh, overnight sailing using traditional means backed by modern technology for the safety of our students. Um, but it, it goes shows sort of that foundation to outdoor recreation parks and tourism as a school here at Lakehead and, and probably where our original or our, our first custodians of the land um, use those and now how it continues to evolve is really interesting to see. So thank you for sharing more about that. Um, next, I'm going to do the first part of this where I chat a bit about the juried student art exhibition, then I'll pass over to Alice to share more about the media arts showcase. So our Department of Visual Arts actually hosts an annual uh, juried student art exhibition in which all the students in the department are invited to submit studio coursework to exhibit. The event itself is unique to Lakehead University and celebrates the high quality of students and the art that they produce as a part of their programs and, and their courses. Our work is chosen by a jury of visual arts instructors and then later installed actually at the Thunder Bay Art Gallery for a five-week five exhibition. Um, the opening night itself includes an awards celebration with over $7,000 in achievement awards presented to students for selected artworks in the exhibition. So you can see a photo here at that exhibition. Um, I, I think that although I mentioned the money, it's not a, always about the money. It's more about the experience and having that, that proud and, and shining moment where you get to see your art or your piece displayed so prominently in an art gallery here in Thunder Bay. Um, it's very exciting for our students. I know that I've chatted with quite a few of them ha that have participated in them and, and they just feel so proud of seeing their art on display, but also especially the opening night, um, the energy in the room and the excitement that both the, the students have, but also their family members, their friends, and the instructors that have seen them perhaps start in year one and continue to evolve or, or drastically even change their, their take on visual arts has been very interesting. With that being said, I'll, I'll pass over to Alice to share more about something uh, of a similar take in Aurelia for the media, film, and communications students. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so every year we have a media art showcase. Um, it's usually at the end of April, we might pull that up a little bit more, uh, like closer to March this this year, I don't know yet. Um, it's our fourth year students who do most of the planning for this event. Um, and it, it actually involves work that's produced in every um, media production course at our campus each year. And so that includes even first year students. And so it will involve a lot of videos that students have created on the big screen. Um, and then we often have smaller screens as well, showing podcasts or um, sound recordings or other um, smaller, smaller videos, little vignettes perhaps that students have created. And as well in the hallways, we usually have photography and poster presentations that students have created. So it's it's a fantastic exhibition of student creations during that year. And everyone's invited to that. Um, we have held it in a variety of locations. We held it at Lakehead the last two years, but we've also held it at the Aurelia Museum of Art and History. They have a large room there. We've held it there before. Uh, we've also had it at the Aurelia Public Library. Um, and there's usually food that's that's served. Um, people bring their families, um, their friends, and it's it's just a wonderful celebration of student um, material that they've created. And last year we had um, some members from from the Aurelia Arts community attend the the Media Art Showcase, and they were very impressed um, by the caliber of work that was produced. Awesome. I, I think that <laughs> I always tying into something that one of you has shared, um, the caliber of art and, and culture in our communities, although we're recognized as smaller communities within Ontario, I think it is so, so incredible. Um, it's really exciting to see. I don't have time, unfortunately, to to dive into 
arts and culture and entertainment in our hometowns. I encourage those who are watching today, of course, to check out our hometowns webinar or our information sessions or even our website where you can learn more. Um, but thank you again for, for sharing more, Alice. Uh, as we sort of come full circle to today's webinar, I want to chat a bit about career opportunities. So as you look to perhaps wrapping up your degree at Lakehead, there is a, a department called the Career Services and Co-op team. They're going to help you pursue full-time employment upon graduation. That's, again, tied into why we have such strong employment rankings. Uh, but career opportunities, I won't list everyone on here, but this is a, a diverse range of where our graduates have gone. By no means is this exhaustive. I think that's another part of taking a degree that is more interdisciplinary focused is uh, you may be able to uh, craft that and pursue something that's drastically different than what you see on the screen. And that's okay. We love to see that because it means that you're able to take your degree and, and, and graduate from it, but still go after something that speaks more closely to where you have passions. Um, so that's a good overview of the career opportunities. Um, chatting about career opportunities also ties into our outstanding alumni. So uh, before I let everyone go, I want to share a story from Vani, who is one of our graduates in English and math from China. She is now a financial advisor at Sun Life here in Canada. Um, when we had an opportunity to sit down with Vani and, and chat about her Lakehead experience, she reflected on the fact that that multidisciplinary studies was invaluable to helping her develop both communication, analytical, and interpersonal skills uh, that, of course, is crucial in her work today as a financial advisor. I'm sure you can draw your own connections as to why those three skills specifically may help a financial advisor. Um, but she also reflected on the fact that she was able to uh, build really strong and deep connections uh, during her years at Lakehead. So whether that was because of the small classroom environment or the community feeling that we've always strived to have, um, I think that this is another outstanding alumni that has great things to share about their Lakehead experience. With that being said, it is the time to conclude our formal presentation with social sciences and humanities. I want to thank our panel for joining us once again. And now it's time to dive into our live question and answer period. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, I want to encourage you to comment below or connect with us on social media. We can be found at Lakehead International on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks for watching once again, and hopefully we'll see you at the next live webinar. Bye for now.